The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are kicking off their preseason Friday night. We preview the matchup with the Pittsburgh Steelers. That and more on today's episode of Locked on Bucks. Your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. <laughs> What's up and welcome into this Thursday slash Friday episode of Locked on Bucks, your daily podcast covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. We want to thank you for making Locked on Bucks your first listener view every single day. Don't forget you can subscribe or follow for free on YouTube wherever you get your podcasts and you can follow us on Twitter. I am James Yarko at JRCO underscore Bucks. He is David Harrison at D Harrison 82. We are your hosts of Locked On Bucks, credentialed members of the media covering your Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm the deputy editor of SB Nations, BucksNation.com. David is a staff writer over at BucksGameDay.com, Sports Illustrated's fan nation site covering the Buccaneers. We are here with you every Monday through Friday, along with our everydayers. We want to share our appreciation for your continued support of the show. And real quick, we did a little shuffling. We thought, how much sense does it make to sit on a Friday night preseason game? So we moved our Thursday episode to late Thursday night. Maybe some of you are catching this Friday morning, but we will have a reaction episode following that preseason game dropping late Friday night, early Saturday morning. So just a little little bit of a shuffle, but you're still getting five episodes this week as promised. And today's episode of Locked on Bucks is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Visit underdogfantasy.com. Or find them in the App Store and sign up with promo code Locked On to get your first deposit doubled up to one hundred dollars. Plenty of Tampa Bay Buccaneers missed the first preseason game last year, so which ones should you expect to miss this year, and what we're watching for? But first, let's talk about our expectations for Friday's games, uh, or Friday's game, uh, James, uh, and my expectation for friday's game is very interesting because you've already told me what your expectation is and they contrast very very <laughs> very much i believe not necessarily with the first team because i think with the first team and even uh the second team like the first series or even two series probably not but by the time you get like john wolford in there i think we're going to have a period in this game where maybe it's second and 10, maybe it's third and eight, and the Buccaneers are going to run the ball. And Buccaneers fans who are going to give in to their knee-jerk reactions are going to go, what in the Byron left, which is happening right now? But here's what I think is going to happen, James. As important as the passing game is in the National Football League, and we all know it's a passing league, it's a quarterback-driven league, all those things. Receivers are superstars. Like 80 of the top 100 in the NFL are wide receivers, apparently. Things like that. Who tends to win Super Bowls? When you have two teams playing for it all, who tends to win the Super Bowls? Who ha- who tends to win the grinded out games in the playoffs? The teams that uh, have the better rushing attack, right? Uh, I was doesn't mean that the running backs. Well, defense too. Yeah. So I'm talking about offensively, right? Like you look at the 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 Kansas City Chiefs, right? Like they have Patrick Mahomes. They did a lot of good things with Isaiah Pacheco. Even the short game is an extension or short passing game is an extension of the running game mantras. They did a lot of those things, right? Kadarius Tony, all that stuff. And it goes back, you know, further for playoff Lenny, Lombardi Lenny, all those things, right? Not every time, but just most of the time, I would say. So doing this, you do two things. You Get your depth pieces, a lot of work in the rushing game. It helps you isolate your number two back potentially and find out who your number two back is going to be. And I lied, it's actually going to do three things. And it gives you the opportunity to get good reps in, but also get progress in your kicking competition because that is that is also a very important part of this Buccaneers offseason training camp preseason that I think they need to work on. And you can do it one of two ways. You can go out there and tell your quarterback, hey, buddy, We'd love to convert this third and eight, but that 43-yard field goal looks really cool right about now. So do us a favor and throw this thing in the stands. Or you can run the ball, and one of two things is going to happen. You're going to get stopped. You're going to learn something about your team, or you're going to pick that bad boy up, and you're going to learn something about your team. Either way, you're about to learn something about your team because if you don't pick up the first down, you take your kicker out there, and you get a rep in the field goal kicking competition. So I expect to see a little bit of confusing play call maybe down the stretch 
because this team wants to do some things to identify their run game strengths, but also identify their kicking competition. And all of that makes 100% sense. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to argue with a single point that you made because what a lot of people in our everydayers know that we have talked about this every single preseason since we started this show. Preseason games are not about wins and losses. The Buccaneers, the last two years, one in five in the preseason. They're about situational football, putting yourself in a situation that you may see in a game and seeing how these decisions work out. So you may, as you mentioned, want to go for the 43, 45, 48 yard field goal rather than trying to get into the end zone because you want to test your kicker. And in the Bucs case, they have two of them. So they want to test these guys in game situations. My, what I expect to see does somewhat contrast with what you expect to see, but it's for the exact same reason of what you just explained. And I expect a little bit of an aggressive approach. And what I mean by that isn't Dave Canal is calling for 60 yard bombs down the field. What I'm talking about is if they're between the 40s and it's fourth down, it doesn't matter if it's fourth and two or fourth and 10, I think they're going to go for it. They're going to try out that situational football, you know, especially with Baker and Kyle in the game. They're going to try those situations out to see how their quarterbacks do in that situation. If it's, you know, fourth and goal inside the five, I expect them to go for it. I don't expect them to rely on the field goal. They know that both McLaughlin and Blankenship can kick that what used to be an extra point chip shot field goal. What they want to see is, all right, our backs are against the wall. It's fourth and goal. How does our offense answer? How do they get in the end zone? So I expect an aggressive approach from that standpoint. I'm, I'm not, again, I'm not calling for Trask and Baker to throw 50, 60 yard bombs to, to Devin Tompkins or, or whoever. I'm, I'm not expecting fake punts or fake field goals. What I am expecting is for them to read the situations that they have, the down and distance, the spot on the field, and be a little more aggressive just to try those situations out in live action. Yeah, you know, it's funny. We're actually almost talking about the same thing, just different exactly. contexts. Like it's it's yeah. actually very interesting. I like it. Um and I hope to see it. And I listen with the with the first uh, with the first two offenses, I guess honestly like with Trask and Baker on the field, honestly, I, I hope that we see some of those deep shots, right? Because that's what we've been talking about a lot is, is whose who's deep ball is better. Well, look, some guys are not practicers as much as they're gamers. And some guys aren't gamers as much as they're practicers. Uh, but which one puts you in the win column and loss column? The game, right? So let's see him push the ball down the field. Let's see him take some shots. Honestly, and like you said, it's not so much about the result as it is everything else. Like, given the discrepancy between Baker's deep ball and Kyle's deep ball, I would just be happy to see Kyle push the ball down the field like 65 yards and do sure. it fairly well. You know what I mean? Even if it's not completed necessarily. I mean, it can't be 20 yards past his receiver. That's ridiculous. But you know what I mean? Get it in the ballpark. Let your receiver make a play on it. Falls to the ground. It falls to the ground. I just want to see that he can do it because I think we need to remember going back to last preseason against the Miami Dolphins. Like Kyle Trask had a fairly good first half of that football game mm -hmm. until he didn't. And then it went really, really bad, really, really quickly. Well, that's a learning experience. You know what I mean? And Kyle is now a year older and he's been through that circumstance. So I want to see how he comes out of it. And, and honestly, I would like to see both quarterbacks in this game. And then in the next one, presuming that they flip who starts and who doesn't, I'm assuming that's what's going to happen. Um, I want to see both of them go through some adversity. So I wouldn't mind seeing an interception in this arena because then you can see how those guys bounce back. So we do expect to see plenty from the quarterbacks, obviously, because we're talking about them. And we honestly, even some of the kickers, but there are plenty of players we don't expect to see like Tom Brady, for example, that's coming to next on today's episode of Locked on Bucks, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked on Bucks is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Underdog is the easiest play to play fantasy football and the best place to play best ball. If you're confused by the Tom Brady comment, hopefully you're not confused by the best ball comment. Best ball, basically you build your fantasy roster just like you build any other fantasy roster. And what happens is you don't have to set your lineup. Whoever scores the best points for your team 
that's who counts. The guys that don't score the best points for your team, they don't count. Whether you position them, uh, you can honestly can't even position starters because it's best ball. They don't have that. Uh, best ball mania four is the largest fantasy football tournament ever. August is here, and you know what that means. The official start of fantasy football drafting month. Get championship ready for your home league by trying out best ball on underdog fantasy. All you do is one live snake draft, no waivers, no trades. Underdog sets your best lineup every week. Try it out with Underdog's Best Ball Mania Tournament. I've always, or I've always, I've already entered my entry into it, which means you have no chance of winning because I'm taking that thing home. The largest oh, fantasy football contest of all time is back. You're not getting it either. And even bigger with $15 million of total prizes up for grabs that you can get a share of, including an absurd $3 million going to David Harrison, the winner. Last year, the winner, not me, somebody else, drafted their team in July. But this year it was early August because that's when I drafted mine. So don't wait around. Visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the app store and sign up with promo code locked on to get your first deposit doubled up to $100 and take as good as second place in Best Ball Mania. That's underdog fantasy promo code locked on. Thanks for making Locked On Bucks your first listen or view today and every day. Let me take the underdog banner out there, especially thank you to all the everydayers out there for joining James Yarko and myself, future best ball mania winner. I'm in of the midst of my draft. Right. Million dollars. Here's my promise to all of you. When I win $3 million, I'm getting locked on bucks rally towels made for a thousand people. And you're, you're sharing 10% of your winnings with your co-host. Whoa. Whoa. That is not a legal statement. We know that Baker Mayfield is starting at quarterback, just as Locked On Bucks predicted. Baker Mayfield is starting at quarterback. <laughs> but how many of the ones will be taking the field with him? Listen, audio listeners that are, that are Kyle Trask fans, we are joking. Okay, that was not real. Greg Almond of Fox Sports recently tweeted out uh, on Wednesday. That's how recent it was. The amount of Buccaneers players that missed the first preseason game of the season last season for the Buccaneers, those players were Ryan Suckup, Ryan Griffin, Leonard Fournette, not preseason Lenny, Kyle Rudolph, Joe Tryon, Shoinka, Tommy Brady, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Brashad Perryman, Russell Gage, Keanu Neal, Sean Murphy, Bunty, Carlton Davis, Logan Ryan, Antoine Winfield Jr., Mike Edwards, Jamel Dean, Devin White, Vita Vea, Levante Dave, Rakeem Nunez, Roches, Shaq Barrett, Jojo Uzugu, Zadarius Hutcherson, Ryan Jensen, Shaq Mason, Josh Wells, Donovan Smith, Tristan Wirth, Cambray, Julio Jones, William Golson, Akeem Hicks. Got him? Got him. Obviously, that was very, plenty of... Our, our older demographic here, the guys that are our age, are going to have flashbacks to the old Micro Machine commercials with the guy that talks oh, yeah. super fast. Yeah, that's what just happened. Locked micro on Bucks. Awesome. Let's bring yeah, them back and get a sponsorship deal. Obviously, plenty of starters aren't going to be suiting up, right? But I know that you and Evan discussed on WTSP Wednesday which starters you think should play. And I got to say that the starters that I think should play for starters, starters that should play for starters, I'm going to give you – how many you want? How many you want on each side of the ball? How many you want me to give you on each side of the how ball? Many, how many do you feel honestly should participate in this game? Should participate. Uh, Rashad White absolutely has to participate. RB1 is a lot different than RB2. Even RB2 who became RB1 at the end of the season is different than RB1 coming into the season. I want to see Rashad White out there. I want to see Cade Otten out there. You are now the primary tight end on this team. New quarterback, somewhat youngish quarterback. I mean, Baker Mayfield is only like 26, 27 years old, right? Like still youngish quarterback. And if Kyle Trask is going to win this job, Tight ends, I believe, are going to be very important. Even though Seattle's offense hasn't really done a good job of like accentuating tight ends, I think just a natural safety net for uh, for defenders or for uh, young quarterbacks are the tight ends. Um, Devin White, man, you know, like Devin White, look, he he said some good things and he said some of the right things, and and you know, we'll have to see if he means it. Where he's going to prove that he means some of the things that he said is on the playing field. What's his attitude going to be like playing for his team? Uh, I wouldn't even say necessarily more than one, more than one series you know what i'm saying but i think that that getting that series is important and uh i'm gonna go with logan hall whose name i almost forgot for a reason um and i don't know that we really consider him a slam dunk starter at this point in time i think he's 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 if i'm not mistaken he's listed on the uh the pre the the unofficial depth chart as a starter right either logan hall or greg Gaines. maybe there's a lot of controversy yeah, there over was, there or there was the no Buccaneers. Or. Good. No, Thanks I know so. that, but I'm just, I just, I just wanted to bring up the or because a lot of people, like people in DC, were talking about the or. Like, this is really that amazing of an event. Anyway, 
Um, yeah, yeah Logan Hall. Um, I almost called him Joe Try and Schwink. I don't know why, just because they're both young guys who have a lot to prove. But Logan Hall, that like those guys, those four guys to me need to get some burn. If one of them was to get left out, it would be Devin White. Because I mean, look, we know Devin White's talent. We know what he's capable of. We know what his potential is. I really am just itching to see if the 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 field play matches some of the words that he said this week. Um, and I don't even know how much you really take away from the preseason game on that 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 uh, plane anyway. But those are my four. Yeah, and you know I agree with with Rashad. I mentioned uh, Kate Otten on WTSP Wednesday. Oh. I don't. You mentioned Kate Otten. Okay, yeah, it's about as common of an occurrence as you mentioning Rashad White. Let's be fair. Let's here. go. Uh, I do not agree with your take on Devin White at all. Let him sit yeah, on the side. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Anybody I, I else out there disagrees? I, I'm fine with that. That's fine. Uh, I do agree with Logan Hall, and you know, I for those that didn't listen to WTSP Wednesday, I recommend you go back and you do listen to that. It's the first time we were able to link up, and, and first time Evan's been on in a while. But we talked about the fact that. Tristan Wirfs should get some snaps. He he needs actual live game action, maybe just the first drive. You can leave the rest of the starters in for two drives, maybe three, depending on how much of a look you want to get at Baker Mayfield. Give Tristan one drive, just one drive as he continues to acclimate to this left side. Um, but I think Gedeke and Malk, much like what, what Evan mentioned, Gedeke and Malk need to be in there the entire time the Baker is, maybe even the first drive for Kyle Trask. We need to see how this the, the right side of this offensive line is really starting to take shape. We mentioned Zion McCollum. Can you call him a starter? He's kind of slotted in as that starting nickel right now. He's going to need some extra work as well. Uh, and then I think someone that I didn't mention on, on TSP Wednesday, Joe Tryon Shoyinka. We need to get him a few reps because this is a guy that – we have pointed to on this show, the head coach has called him out, the GM has called him out, all of them are saying, we need to see that next step in development. And I think it's going to start with him in this preseason game. We need to see kind of what what he has evolved into to this stage because Tryon Shoyinka has to have a big year. Like, there's no question about yeah. it. Let's see where he is. Let's see him in live game action and kind of judge him from there as to what still needs to be worked on as training camp continues to, you know, happen and and more preseason games are coming down the road, but there's a lot riding on on JTS's performance this season. Let's go ahead and get him out there again. Could be very much like Tristan. Put him out there for one one drive, one possession. See what he can do, and then you can pull. Him. No, absolutely. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Um, the only thing I would say is that with Tristan Wirfs. If Tristan is out there, your entire starting offensive line has to be out there. I am not putting Tristan Wirfs next to a second team left guard. No way, no how. Yeah, if Tristan's they, they out there, put the rest of the starters out there with him. Um, but as far as like Gedeke and Malk getting work with other teams, not just the first team, I'm okay with that. Like just get those guys uh, some reps. Honestly, it's kind of hard because part of me wants to say that both quarterbacks should play between behind the first line. Yeah, but obviously, the more you play them, the more risk there is for injury. You know what I mean? So it's it's a balancing act. But I think in an ideal world, you put both of your quarterbacks, you put Trask and Mayfield both behind the first team line, no matter if they're playing with second team receivers, first team receivers, what have you. Um, and then, yeah, I was going to trade uh, Devin White for Joe Tryon Shoinka, so 100%. Uh, Zion, look, I would love to see the kick get some burn. I don't know if you consider him a starter yet or not, but you know, I would love to see him get a, a good amount of burn. So... Obviously, we're hoping to see a lot of these players play. We're hoping to see a lot of good things from those players. What are some other things that we're watching for in this game? We're going to tell you that. Coming up next on Locked on Bucks. Wrapping things up here on a preseason game one preview edition of the Locked on Bucks podcast. And people are going to tell you that the preseason's dumb. Preseason is boring. dumb. Or boring. Mm -hmm. Or not worth watching. Not worth watching. I'm going to disagree. And I'm going to say that David disagrees too, even though he hasn't actually said that. I'm telling you right now, David disagrees with those statements as well. I disagree. There, there are always certain things or players to watch for in preseason games. And the biggest thing outside of the performance of the quarterbacks that I am really going to focus on is the kicking competition. 
That to me is number one in this game. There's only so much that you can judge from the quarterbacks. One's getting to play with the ones, one's getting to play with the twos. But you know who has an even playing field across the board? The kickers. Because they're going to have to kick from these spots. They're going to have their special teams out in front of them. There's not really going to be a ton of shuffling around the the protection for these kickers between now and week one against the Minnesota Vikings. How do they handle the pressure? If the Buccaneers are in a situation with less than a minute left to tie or take the lead with a field goal, which player are they trusting to go out there and make that kick? The competition so far has been close, but it looks like McLaughlin is leading by a slim margin. Are the Buccaneers going to give Blankenship the opportunity to take the lead with a game-tying or a game-winning kick? If we have a kick that looks like it's going to be over 50 yards, who's going to go out there to take it? How are they going to divvy up which kickers are taking which kicks? Is it going to be a first-half, second-half thing? But Buccaneers fans know, our everydayers know, what an absolute cesspool the kicker position has been for the Buccaneers for the majority of the last decade. Outside of Ryan Suckup the last couple of years, and even he had his limits, the kicker for the Bucs has been atrocious. You don't want to see them fall back into that again. So as insignificant as people find kickers to be in fantasy football, or as much of a punching bag as fans like to make kickers when they miss a kick, this, this competition could mean the difference between seven and ten and ten and seven. Absolutely. The forgotten phase in football, certainly a very, very important one. It actually kind of plays into what I'm looking for, what I'm hoping to see, uh, and that is depth receivers. Like you can't yeah. get Mike Evans and Chris Godwin and Russell Gage off the field fast enough, as far as I'm concerned. And there are are two to three specific guys that I'm actually looking for. One of them is something that we talked about a lot during the spring and have not really talked about at all during training camp. And that's Trey Palmer. And Trey remember Palmer. going back to what we talked about before, I've got Kenny bell syndrome here. I yep. need to see Trey Palmer make some catches with some, some contact coming. And uh, you know what I mean? Like he's, he's not a guy that we've heard. We've heard a lot of Rakeem Jarrett. We've heard some Ryan Miller. We've heard take Barber's name, like not a lot of Trey Palmer. You know what I mean? But you look at the depth chart, right? And, and it's funny, actually. So I've, I've spoken, I've, sp I've spoken, I've spoken to some NFL coaches about preseason depth charts, and and this isn't secret stuff. Like coaches talk about this stuff all the time. But like the depth chart is a combination of who we think is solid and who we need to see more of, right? So it's really kind of left up for interpretation. When I look at the Buccaneers depth chart, I kind of look at Trey Palmer, second team receiver, David Moore, second team receiver, Devin Tompkins, second team receiver. They are the epitome of a mixed bag. Like mm -hmm. Dave Canales knows what to expect with David Moore because he coached him in Seattle for years. What he doesn't necessarily know is how is David Moore going to execute this offense in Tampa with these quarterbacks? That's what we're about to find out. Trey Palmer, the young rookie with a lot of hype, a little bit of less hype now the training camp has gotten on. So we have a little bit of product, we have a little bit of potential, but also let's see what he can do. Devin Tompkins, we already know his potential in the return game. We know his potential as a weapon on the field. Let's see if he can get out there in the office and see if the, if the quarterbacks can find him and what he can turn into. And then Talking about that forgotten phase, Devin Tompkins in the return game. I'm telling you right now, James, Devin Tompkins has an opportunity to solidify himself a spot on the active roster this weekend. Mm -hmm. Like Friday midnight, if Devin Tompkins can take one of these kicks, punt, kickoff, return, doesn't matter, to the house and take another one, 40 yards, I will come on Locked On Bucks, my very next appearance, say Devin Tompkins is going to be on the active roster. If he can do that in preseason week one, I will tell you that Devin Tompkins will have an active spot on the roster because that's how important field position is going to be for this team, especially this offense. And that's how electric good return men can be. Now, if he fumbles two of these kicks, muffs them, maybe he finds himself a little bit further down the depth chart next week. But it's going to be a big week for all these guys. I'm really excited to see what Rakeem Jarrett is going to do. Just, you know, Kalen Geiger is another one. Cade Warner, uh, I'm hearing a lot of slow, slow guy comments. I want to see if that matters on a, on a football field. You know what I mean? So. There's a lot of depth uh, that's intriguing because it's preseason. Um, regular season, that depth could be terrifying or exciting, depending on what happens starting on Friday. Yeah, I mean, it, it's something that I've talked about quite a bit on on the show, and 
Uh, yeah, Evan has, has mentioned the depth of wide receiver as well. And, and yeah, that's going to be a major story, especially because we know Mike, Chris, Russell, even if Mike and, and Chris were playing, Russell's probably sitting out because he's been dealing with an injury, just like you had mentioned in the last segment, if if Tristan Wirfs is out there, then the whole starting line needs to be out there. I agree. Put Filer in. Ryan Jensen's not suiting up for this game, so he's out. You got Robert Hainsey or uh, Nick Leverett there as the starting center. But you do need to see as much of these guys as possible. Mike's, Chris's, uh, Russell's jobs are not in jeopardy. They're they are locked, loaded. They wouldn't they don't have to set foot on the field if it weren't for a quarterback competition and needing to see how Kyle plays with them, how Baker plays with them. So they'll probably see some action. I would say the third preseason game, uh, as as Evan pointed out, the joint practices with the Jets. That's really where you're going to get a feel for what's going on with the offensive chemistry, depending on which quarterback is in. So I'm with you 100 percent. Real quick, one other thing that I'm going to keep an eye on is, is simply a couple of players that I really, really want to see in action. And it's Servassier Dennis, it's Yaya Diaby, and it's Payne Durham. We, yes. we know Cade is kind of the, the tight end one, but there's a lot of love for Payne Durham out there right now. And we know Keeft kind of has his own little niche role as the tight end, we could end up if if Payne continues on the trajectory that he's on, we may have a 50-50 split situation between Kate Otten and Payne Durham. And, and as you brought up, Dave Canales comes from Seattle where they really don't have a tight end one. They have all these tight ends that can do all the jobs. So you never really know who's going to be out there, but you know, no matter who it is, they can be effective. So I'm real interested yeah. to see how Payne Durham does against uh, another defense. Yeah, and that's another example. Like Payne Durham, if you look at the the unofficial depth chart, David Wells is the third tight end. Payne Durham is in there in the fourth uh, with the fourth team. I think that's a situation where we want to see what David Wells can do on the, on the football field. We kind of already know what we expect with Payne Durham and like Payne's making the roster. You know what I mean? Um, so I think that's, again, it's kind of one of those situations where you have to kind of translate it. And the problem is you don't have the answer key. So you just do the best you can. But yeah, I mean, lots, certainly lots to watch. You know what I mean? I, I know some people find preseason, you know, boring or whatever, but there's, there's definitely plenty to watch on this Buccaneers team because a lot of your depth, uh, is going to be very important. And, and unfortunately, just with the way injuries happen, you know, some of these guys, uh, that you consider maybe, you know, not all that important are going to become very important at some point during the season. Yeah, no doubt. Preseason games can be incredibly entertaining and informative if you know what to watch for. So that's why we're here doing this Plus, show. Yeah, keep an eye on the depth players on the Steelers side. Yeah. Like, on, like honestly, like, especially their UDFAs or their veteran free agents that were on the streets in like, you know, late July, their sixth, seventh round draft picks. Like, keep an eye on those guys. If they've got guys that you see pop at a position that you're concerned of, like, if you don't like the linebacker depth, uh, you know, and, and you see like an undrafted free agent Steelers linebacker running around the field making plays, and you're like, man, that dude would look great in pewter. You never know, man. Like that guy, trust me, those those pro scouts for the Buccaneers, they're they're well, they've already watched, but they're also going to continue watching the other side of of the of the field. So definitely keep an eye for their players as well. Yeah, I mean, you got what 40 guys being cut from every NFL team here in less than a month. Yeah. Keep keep an eye on those players as well. So that is going to do it for this episode. We will be back again, like I said, late Friday night, early Saturday morning with a recap, our takeaways from the game between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Pittsburgh Steelers. But we want to thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first listener view every single day. Any questions, ideas, thoughts, reactions, anything at all, drop them in the YouTube comments or email us at LockedOnBucksPodcast at gmail. Dot com. You can, of course, DM the uh, Twitter account at Locked on Bucks. Check out everything that David is doing over at BucksGameDay.com. Check out my work at BucksNation.com. Follow everything on Twitter at Locked on Bucks, at JRCO underscore Bucks, and at DHarrison82. Hope you all have an absolutely outstanding day. Stay safe, stay healthy, fire the cannons. Want to thank you for joining us right here at Locked on Bucks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.